one of the most respected forecast entities when it comes to seasonal hurricane forecasting just released their outlook for the 2023 hurricane season. I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas, and in this video, we are going to look at the fresh outlook for April. They do a couple of these leading up to hurricane season and in season as things become a little more clear, of course, as you get closer and closer to the season itself. So we're going to go over what the folks at Colorado State University are predicting. There's also the probability of impacts in terms of landfall. So we're going to break that down as well. There's not a clear cut region to focus on this year, but we're going to talk about that. And then some of the forces that are driving this upcoming hurricane season. It, this is going to come a little more clear for you when I show you the actual forecast, but there's going to be a battle between El Nino, which would suggest a relatively speaking and for a frequency anyway, a lower than normal season. But the water temperatures are also blazing, blazing hot right now. So there is a lot to talk about and that battle is gonna be interesting. So here is their forecast. They are predicting 13 named storms, six of those to become hurricanes, greater than 74 mile per hour winds. And then two of those becoming major hurricanes. That is going to be your category three, four, and five, greater than category three, which is 100, 111 mile per hour sustained wind. Now compare that to average. It's slightly below. Average is 14 named storms, seven of those becoming hurricanes, three becoming major. Last year, we were pretty much average for 2022. We had 14 named storms, eight hurricanes two major hurricanes hey before we go into some of the driving forces of course with hurricane season right around the corner you have to hit subscribe if you want to stay updated to all things tropical meteorology all things hurricanes so make sure you give this a subscribe and if you are finding this video helpful please hit that like button as well all right so i mentioned el nino before we get into that i know colorado it's it might seem weird on the surface why are they forecasting tropical meteorology they're landlocked that is true, but they do have some of the most well-respected hurricane forecasters in the business on a seasonal scale. All right, so El Nino. What we have going on right now is expected to really transition into that El Nino. We've got rid of La Nina. La Nina would typically mean that you're going to have a higher than normal hurricane season because there's less wind shear. The opposite is true for El Nino. When you're looking at, at an El Nino, you're going to be talking about warmer than normal water temperatures right through the equatorial Pacific off the coast of South America. That means that we have weaker trade winds in play. That's going to allow the warmer water to really, really surge. For the Atlantic, hard to believe, but that little strip of warm water has a huge impact on the Atlantic hurricane season. That means that there's likely going to be more wind shear around. Hurricanes don't like wind shear. They like a nice, calm environment. Wind shear tends to interact with these things. It helps to tilt the thunderstorms. They like to be nice, vertically stacked. It's more like your Leaning Tower of Pisa rather than your Empire State Building. Again, they like to be nice and straight rather than tilted. Wind shear helps to keep them on the tilted side. I mentioned, though, that there was a battle coming, and it was one of the reasons why Colorado State did not forecast a much below average season. It is because the other component to hurricanes are the warmer waters. If you've been around hurricanes, of course, if you followed them, you know that they really need warm water. Well, all of this orange color right now is the sea surface temperature anomalies that are above normal. And right now through the main development region, which is pretty much from the Lesser Antilles, the start of the Caribbean, out in this area to Africa, and look at around the Cabo Verde Islands that darker orange there. So the water temperatures are already in April way, way above normal. So given the correct environmental conditions, if there was limited wind shear, if there was enough moisture around for those thunderstorms to thrive, you'd be talking about storms be able to go gangbusters in this region. Also way above normal, you kind of see the Gulf Stream there, but right off the Southeast coast of the United States, and then right into the Gulf of Mexico way above. Western Caribbean, a little bit above, where we do have normal to maybe even a smidge below normal is in the Caribbean. Mention about landfall probabilities. Historically speaking, for Florida to be impacted by a category three hurricane or higher, it's about 22% historically speaking. Colorado State giving it a 23% shot, really for the Florida Peninsula and then up the Eastern seaboard. 
Really the same deal for the North Gulf Coast as well. All in all, they're expecting a 44% shot for a Category 3 to make landfall anywhere along the United States coastline. So we're going to be watching that. Now, as mentioned with the El Nino, one of the areas that it does look like from a widespread standpoint where we are going to see limited activity is in the Caribbean. This is the area that we would typically see the wind shear really having a strong impact. There's also more stable air in here. It's also drier. So we are expecting things to be on the quieter side from the standpoint of the Caribbean. But again, it's going to be interesting to see this battle between a strengthening El Nino and really hot off the press on April 13th. NOAA issued that they believe that there's going to be an 81% shot for us to climb into an El Nino and a potentially a pretty moderate to strong El Nino as well by the peak of hurricane season. So I keep on talking about this battle, and I think that's why, well, I know that's why Phil Klotzbach mentioned that in his conference that he had earlier on April 13th that there's some uncertainty there in terms of the numbers because you do have the Atlantic way above normal right now, and it's expected to remain way above normal through hurricane season. But then you also have the deterrent in El Nino likely coming on. So the question is, how strong is El Nino going to get? And how much are those higher than normal water temperatures going to play a role as we go forward into the upcoming hurricane season. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you want to stay updated to all things tropical meteorology, hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you found this content informative, please hit that thumbs up. It really does help out us out a lot. And again, it only takes one. That's the one thing that I want to get across. No matter if there is a way below normal season forecast or a way above, it only takes one to be a bad season for the area that is impacted. So always important, even if there is one storm forecast, which there's not, just important to make sure that as we get closer and closer to hurricane season to make sure you have your kits ready, make sure you have your plan in place. Of course, 2022 was ugly, especially for Florida, for Puerto Rico, and for a lot of areas in Central America as well. But just keep that in mind. It only takes one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.